Diana Ross is a very cool, cool woman. And what she was doing was she was doing a concert in, uh, so in New York, City Field, I think. And um, her PR came to me and, and we asked for the interview, figuring she'd never say yes. And she did. So her interview was tough because she was a, she was a one word answer. <laughs> she, you had to like pull it out of her. Uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't the best interview I ever did, but it was Diana Ross, so it didn't really matter. <laughs> she was uh, she was great, and I reviewed her um, concert, which they gave us tickets to, and that was great. So I mean, she's she, she's an icon. Of if, if you ask me, who is the most famous person on the planet that you've ever interviewed? And I've interviewed a lot. I I have to say. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is the Foxworth Theory, and I am your host, Eugenia Foxworth. And today's guest is Eileen Shapiro. Now, Eileen, what was a memorable moment during your interview with Boy George? There was a lot of memorable moments. <laughs> The story of Boy George is this. We went to see him, myself and my photographer, who follows me around, because obviously if you're a journalist, you need a photographer. And we went to see a concert, and they were playing with one of the Thompson twins, who I had interviewed, and as well as uh, the B-52s, which uh, my photographer knew very well. So we had backstage passes anyway. And we were told that, you know, we Billy can't um, shoot Boy George because he has his own photographer. Five minutes before the concert started, uh, his manager came over to me and said, where's the guy with the big camera? I said, well, he's back there. He goes, well, this is his lucky day because Boy George's photographer is not showing up. After the concert, we went backstage and his manager, who was so cool, such a cool man, said, I'll tell you what. I, if you write the best review that you've ever written in your life, I'll get you an interview with Boy George. I said, okay. So I went and I wrote the best review that I ever wrote in my life, and he deserved it anyway. And uh, the next day I get a call from his manager, and he said, well, now you are Boy George's favorite journalist. And I wound up doing the bio for his uh, newest album, an album that he, he hadn't done an album in 19 years. And I wound up doing a, an interview with him, and the interview was about two and a half hours because he likes to talk. But sometimes when you interview someone right away, it's like you've known them all your life. And he was one of those, very open, very fun. And he was just, he was great. We, we laughed a lot, and uh, we had like the best rapport on the planet. So that, that was a lot of fun for me, and it was a cool story. It was just like an accident. So I loved it. Uh-huh. Well, you know, reading about you and sort of following you, the internet is so good. You don't even have to hire people anymore. True. You had an interview with Diana Ross. What do you highlight? What is your highlight of that interview? Diana Ross is a very cool, cool woman. And what she was doing was she was doing a concert and uh so uh, in New York, City Field, I think. And um, her PR came to me and, and we asked for the interview, figuring she'd never say yes. And she did. So her interview was tough because she was a, she was a one word answer. <laughs> she, you had to like pull it out of her. Uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't the best interview I ever did, but it was Diana Ross. So it didn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> she was uh she was great and I reviewed her um concert which they gave us tickets to and that was great so I mean she's she, she's an icon of if, if you ask me who is the most famous person on the planet that you've ever interviewed and I've interviewed a lot I I'd have to say her and that's interesting and you said in Central Park that was the famous concert where she wore that exquisite red dress and the sky opened up and just that's the one. Her and she kept going. <laughs> that's the one. But um, you know what? She she's so great. She's 
she's a nicer person than a lot of people know. I mean, you know, not that people say she's a bad person, but she's a, a really, really kind person. I, I will tell you that. So. I, well, you know, when you, they say something about crabs in a basket and when you get to the top, you shouldn't go all the way up because then they'll try to pull you down. And, and and that could be, but I've not, you hear good. You don't hear gray. You hear, oh, she's fabulous. I love her and so forth, et cetera. You know, or, you know, like, right. You know, like what was going on in her life when you interviewed her? Of course, it was the concert in the park. And that mm -hmm. probably was more, that's when she should have been at her worst. I, you know, because um, the rain and the disrupt, and I think that was phenomenal. And for you to do the interview, amazing. She, she's phenomenal. The fact that she said yes was phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. So who is someone that you would love to interview? Is there anyone that you would like to interview that you have not interviewed yet? Yes. So here's the deal. I had a bucket list. And I started to interview people because I wanted to complete my bucket list. One of them was Rick Springfield, who I actually got to interview twice. Another one was Adam Ant, and it took me six years to interview him, but I did it. And the next one is Billy Idol, who I have not interviewed. I've met him many times, but I have not interviewed him. So if anyone out there knows the connection to Billy Idol, please help me. <laughs> so, yeah, he's he's on my bucket list for sure. And uh, and Alice Cooper, I'd like to interview Alice Cooper, who I've also met a lot, but Billy Idol is like, have to do it. Have you to have to. Yeah. <laughs> you will. You're yep. reading The Secret. You'll do it. I know. I'm not even And wrong. I know you're reading. It's probably dog-eared by now. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, I listen to it. You always get something new out of it every time you either listen to it or read it. So, yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's the important part about the universe. So what was the toughest interview for you? The toughest interview? You know what? I've never had a bad interview, ever. Everyone that I've ever had, there, there were some people that weren't, you know, as friendly. But I remember interviewing Sandra Bernhardt for the first time. And she scared me um, and she wasn't funny. And she, she was very professional, very, I almost thought she hated me by the time I got done with the interview. Anyway, I wound up meeting her. We wound up, I wound up interviewing her about nine or 10 more times to the point where she said, Eileen, you know what I'm going to say? So just write it for me. You don't even have yeah. to talk to me. So, I mean, I guess that was the toughest. I, the most I, I'm nervous before any interview. I don't care who it is, um, even even if it's somebody, you know, that's that's on their way up and not, and not necessarily, you know, quote unquote, a celebrity yet. But I'm always nervous because, and, and I've done, oh my god, I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. But you always get that little butterfly in in, in your stomach, thinking, oh my god, um, what's going to happen? And. Uh, you know, I, I just want to have a rapport with people so that I can go on with the interview. So I, I think I think Sandra was maybe the hardest, but she turned out to be one of the easiest. So it's it's hard to say. It's hard yes. to say. Mm -hmm. That's but good. I, like I said, I've never had a bad interview. I've never, ever had a bad interview. That's so great. I, yeah. I mean, that That is really good because sometimes I watch the – uh, the late night shows and and I know that some of them are are like can't wait till this person gets off because you can tell they're they're feeding the lines and it's yeah yeah, yeah that, that's scary, that's scary. <laughs> so now tell us about your book I know it's going to be amazing so could you tell our audience about your book well it's called waiting for Adam and the next one is going to be the sequel will be waiting for Billy. Mm -hmm. And it's already written. I just need Billy. And what it is, it's, it's kind of the funny stories that happened to me on the way to interviewing Adam Ant because it took six years. And I figured the more 
cool people, the more celebrities, the, the higher on the rank I got, the more he would let me into, you know, the, the better chance I'd have to interview him. And it, it kind of worked out that way and, and didn't work out that way. Because, I again, I had met him several times before I got to interview him. And uh, and when I finally did interview him, it was, I, I'm going to tell you, it's probably one of the, you know, aside from Boy George and, and Emma Stone, probably one of the best interviews I've ever, ever done. He was very, um, I mean, I, it was like I knew him already, like almost like a friend. So it was kind of cool. And um, what happened was, um, I didn't interview him in person. I did it over the phone and his publicist gave me his phone number. And I'm like five minutes before the interview, I'm like shaking like a leaf. I'm like, I hope I can speak. So, <laughs> so, um, I wanted up. they told me if he likes you, he'll let you, he'll give you 30 minutes, which is long for an interview that you're transcribing. 15 minutes is good. So anyway, so um, the half hour passes and then an hour passes and then like an hour and 15 minutes. And I'm like, I don't even have any more questions for him. So, you know, I'm the one that finally said, I don't want to take up any more of your time. But it, I mean, he was very thorough. And then he started answering the questions again, the same questions when he thought he had a better answer. So it was fun. It, it was it was fun. Oh, that's good. Now, I know we've talked about your interviews and everything, but did you did not really touch on, like, how did you begin Work Star PR? Okay. I love the name. The name is so catchy. Thank you. Thank you. So what pretty much happened was my partner, Jimmy, had me on his show. And we got along very well, and we became friends. And he used to live in Pennsylvania, so he would come out to go to Fire Island with his husband, because I live with my gay soulmate, so we have a house in Cherry Grove. So, um, and then we were thinking that all these publicists that contact us to do interviews and, 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 and for him to do interviews, for me to do interviews, they were charging their clients for our interviews. And we thought that wasn't fair. So we said, you know what? We're going to just start our own PR company. And within a month, we had like Scott Page from Pink Floyd. I mean, in a month, we had like, like celebrities and we haven't stopped since. And we, you know, we don't charge, I, I, I don't know about New York so much, but I know LA charges so much money. And most publicists deserve the money if they're going to deliver. You know, um, probably besides Jimmy and myself, the, the most hard-worked publicist is probably Angelo, by the way. You know, he's always on top of things, and he's always emailing, and he's always doing this, that, and the other thing. And it, it's hard to do that. It's hard to, you know, to keep up that momentum. But it's also fun, so we do it. So, you know, we just decided that it wasn't fair to people that were starting out that really couldn't afford a publicist. And it wasn't fair to people just because, you know, they had a name and, and, and was so famous that they should have to pay so much more money for somebody not doing anything. And we, you know, we, we got a lot of complaints from people. Oh, my publicist did that. They never did that. So we decided to just do the opposite. We were going to do everything that people complained about. And that's kind of where we are still. Well, you should be trillionaires the way that people complain. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Well, the thing is, they didn't complain about us, but if they did, we absolutely would have been trillionaires. <laughs> uh, but no, that's that's um, that's a, a lovely story, and I like how your life just interwove into things and went where it should be. And it really has been a pleasure talking to you and. You can almost, and I know my audience can, relive some of the things just by the mention of uh, Boy George or, you know, because I saw him on TV a couple of years ago and I was like, wow, he's still around. So, I mean, that oh, yeah. was. And still filling stadiums. Oh, wow. That's well, amazing. Really, I met a man. They're filling, they're still filling stadiums like big time. And well, good them. You know what? They deserve it. Yeah, well, you deserve it because you got them there. 
I mean, you help. You help with the whole thing. Your PR people do a lot of work that people aren't aware of. And there's the positive and the negative, but there's more of the positive. And on that, I want to thank you so much. And I want to thank everyone for joining us today on the Foxworth Theory, which airs every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And thank you for joining the Foxworth Theory and stay well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm blessed to be on your show. Great show. Love thank it. you. Thank you so much.